You step into the massive Surprise. cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look! It's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a minute! Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your new signature adorable tiny food creations. That's what she makes? It's just tiny food? That's so cute. I respect that. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! Rawr, rawr, rawr. For today's <laughs> lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you. But unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders! No! But why? We want the friendship route. <laughs> <sighs> hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as... Look, she's crying! Oh would my god, Would you like God, to tackle this friends. lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Did he get turn us down? Wanna be my partner? I hope he does. Oh. Oh. Damn it. Sure, Nunny. I'll prepare our station. But why? Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Beep. Boop. Bzz. Oh my! Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose! Oh my god, robot. robot. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you'll pay for not being alone forever. There's only one choice. But she did like Pop. No, that's weird. He, so, is, a ch he is a child. <laughs> what, what if this makes her our enemy or something? Clank would never do that. He is a hilarious... Fun yeah, loving boy. He's the class clown. I did forget about that. Look at his little chef hat. He's so charming. Okay, Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. The Clank, exactly. Child. Clank, <laughs> Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Wop. Wop. <laughs> oh my! Hold on, fella! We don't even know the assignment yet! Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Tissue? I hardly you! <laughs> See? Clank, <laughs> Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Oh! They're hitting it off hard! Looks like you two will be fine. You're welcome. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking class work. Damn it. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy, and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. It's your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I feel like it wants us to do potatoes and gravy. I mean, I like potatoes. Yeah, and that's easier than steak tartare. Well, steak tartare is pretty easy. I wouldn't know. You just, just do three. You just need <laughs> In practicality, I actually only know how to do three. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I've always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm. Inviting and comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. Are we flirting over potatoes? No, please. Let me... Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. What if we uh -huh. reach for them at the same time and our hands oh. brush? Oh. <gasps> Heartbeat. <laughs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. Damn. Hey, Did okay. someone call for me? 
<laughs> okay, chicken thighs. <laughs> Ugh, no, jeez, ban ban. Why she say look so crazy? <laughs> jeez. While I'm over here crushing Nunny's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? He's sobbing. No! Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there. <laughs> Van Van, are we working at a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Nunny was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. Rude! I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up on my level. Ha! Huh, doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of am admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Hang on, this volume's crazy. Why is it so <laughs> intense? Lower even. That, that, went, that went nuts. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned yourself at your station. You know that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel. If you don't watch out. Ashley, you could have him. Ashley is going, is really going at you hard. Need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Um, turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Miriam? Uh, I mean, I mean, to be fair, Miriam's just having a good time, so yeah. I kind of I kind of don't want to bug her. Okay, yeah. That's that's fair. <laughs> I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of the class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all of their agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Nunny as my partner from this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Nunny's natural talent or their loyalty. Whoa! Oh my god. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. Look at her eyes. Oh, she's defeated. She's you, so sad. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in. But he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, You've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which he pours his smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. You love something. Set it free. What the? <laughs> Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Echele with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Echele's stupid, beautiful face. Huh? Do something! Do something! 
scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Nanny. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. And if you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Or I will, because I'm a dog. A rough. Can I have potatoes face? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Van Van it's rushes awesome. back over. A coveted dish in his hand. Covered dish. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Played on a battle axe bit blade forged for my supreme chef ancestors. That is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first fight, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature gif right off the plate. No! Don't! Something above this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic! Too no, late? Stu student, no! Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven! I don't feel so good. It killed him! Oh my god! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate... Oh my god! The rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! Oh. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello. <laughs> I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. What? what? Why would you say this about <laughs> student? He's so perfect, and he just died. He's beautiful. Oh you can still see his beautiful nose through the through the sheet. His beautiful eyes. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Wait. What? Like, for real? Oh come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know. They're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them. It reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. In a way, you find that inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. We're developing feelings for him? I, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Nunny. There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there! Thank you, Van There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night. Never stopping. Never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff to be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed the guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you, I also saw you kill that guy. 
What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The sp Ooh. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was laying down my guard, connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? He's rhyming on purpose? Is he- is he's rhyming on purpose? <laughs> or is that just a coincidence? But before you can dis discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What? What will you do? Um, How did this happen? Um, do we? I, I guess we're attacking him. Let's kill him. Wait, is he our is he our mashed potatoes and gravy? I I don't know. <laughs> Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Yeah. Cook with love does one damage. Okay. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Sorry. Spork Monster goes on the attack. <laughs> they spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Um. Oh wow, we're actually already just okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It worked last time, right? Yeah. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. <laughs> Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? It, uh, Should we defend? I mean, uh, yeah, I is, guess. <laughs> is he gonna do like a mega attack? You decide yeah. to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, "This is not happening. This is not happening." Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. <gasps> Spork oh. monster uses utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Oh my god, okay. Attack? Yeah. Okay. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monsters oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Wow, villain. Your reign of terror stops here. You were watching the whole time? Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Pot Pie Power Pinch! <laughs> Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You save me! An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Uh, spare him? Y you could choose. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back here for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the choir of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. <laughs> Good night, my colonel. <laughs> in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders, 
for some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh, it's the whole gang. Oh, Ghostman. No, student. He, he really died. You wake on day. You wake on day two, and attempt to, pro to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used Redacted. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. Amazing. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Oh, I hope she had a good day. I hope so too. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might clank- I might like clank! Like him? Like... Like like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him! I like him! Like like him! Good for you. <laughs> we got this talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders! Oh. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? I didn't doubt that. <laughs> no, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. It was also the con and also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of this homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy. Like I am with Colonel Sanders. Are we dating now? Are we dating? What are we? You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? Uh, <laughs> we definitely connected yesterday. Sure you did. You're great, but would he, why would he be with... Uh, why would he be into you, I guess? She's complimenting us. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. We have a love? I... <laughs> Maybe it's just forced. Well, well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's la eyes light up. Hmm. Secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices! The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a huge favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam. Don't tell me. It's croquet. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. Oh my god. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a stra very strange power or feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I've ever tasted! Oh my god, Miriam. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Ever. Anyhow, we both shared interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. No. Oh. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It would mean the world to me! No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders! What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? I would say make up a fake ingredient. Uh, yeah, you kind of so kind of sus. She's, she's just going to tell this drug dealer she met on vacation about a spice? Yeah, that's a little weird. What's going on? Okay, yeah. Um, asparagus is in it. 
You quickly <laughs> think of a fake ingredient name. Hmm. I don't know. How about... It was I of New. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what could you do? Of Newt! Wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing. And you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting in secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh no. It's Colonel Sa <laughs> <laughs> It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. He looks very short now. They they toned down his massive arms. Um also I like his saddle. It's cute. Chickens. Uh stand back and admire or run to him. I don't want to seem desperate because I'm also not into him. Yeah, let's just be creepy stalkers from afar. Okay. <laughs> Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. That is without, a horse. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. Then he slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. What? <laughs> <laughs> you are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh. I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horse of full butte you have. I mean, what a horse of full butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Nanny just, oh, Nanny just gets really nervous around people she likes. Or they like, sorry. What? That is not helping. I'm... I mean, they got food poisoning and we're up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, Situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears in the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. He's like, Nice. I'm out. When you Creepy enter the girl. classroom, you can and you can see your two rivals, Ashale and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Look, it's the man again. Like counterfeiting recipes, bad. He? Experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why are you so scary looking? Why don't you try... Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature or act like you're not interested in them, but really try... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that, uh, that sounds a bit like a magic spell. Getting into occult stuff now? However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and um, improvise an excuse. Oh, uh, him. It's just, it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skill. It takes creativity. It takes pana panache? It takes a panache. <laughs> it takes a panache? <laughs> and it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. What the? You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same That's the same book I found last night at, in the quad. Ajale immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice they haven't been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're playing here! Before you can <laughs> dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Can I just say, Pop looks like he always has sticky fingers. Yeah. And you know, like, yeah. to toddlers when they, like, eat, like, Cheetos, and they put their whole fist in, in their mouth? Yeah. Yeah, that that's what he does. Oh god. Disgusting. Yeah, he would. And he probably <gasps> wipes it on his head. Beep. Beep. Oh. I hope Wesley. it goes to Miriam. 
<laughs> Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ooh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! Ooh. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp, womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> Burbs. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Go, Clank. <sighs> oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Protect me, Colonel Satters. These crazed men are about to come come to blows. I think it must be over for me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Why are you sounding so scary? It sure is. Tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Oh, okay. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem all that, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. Rawr, rawr. You I go. apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Nanny? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh, a glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? I don't think I've ever tried a glass of water before in my life. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite parched. What's a shimmering pepper? Let's do the shimmering pepper. I, then again, I feel like shimmering pepper might kill us. Yeah, it's it's poison. No. Oh, what do you want to do? You know, we could die. I'd be cool yeah, with let's that. Just, that's fine. Let's just die. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. We're dying again. My friend. Ooh. This is the best ending! This guy again? Yeah. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I've still got some spine stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> You must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay, att pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday? Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Oh, <laughs> today's <laughs> lunch will be prepared via a competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time, step up, and tell them you're on. 
No, man, you're on. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're battling. No, no question. They they killed someone last time. There's no way they're gonna be better. Best boy died. <laughs> a bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Nani. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students. Please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer! Just then, a huge red light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about! Oh. Aroo! <laughs> I stand corrected. The hard way builds sol solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my time to shine. That is the most intense battle quote. I will defeat you myself. I like your little knife. It's cute. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Wait, is this all I make? I guess so. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Celsius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're gonna need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? Eleven! That's right! <laughs> you may not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Oh my god. Now that you've got some basic steps going on, it's time to elevate your craft. Uh, uh. Oh shit. Gratitude? Gratitude? Oh yeah, okay. Oh. You must never take this opportunity for granted. If you hope to succeed, your classmates are rooting for you, but Achille is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on, this, on his advice and draw energy from that place. Uh, where does it come from? Uh, small oh, small I didn't town? Know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. I will. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. Uh. Sizzling. Si sizzling? Oh no, that's oh. wrong. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. Oh. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Nunny. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome. Except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think of is Colonel Sanders. Can we stop. So How many spoonfuls of gravy? Oh, oh, oh. 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 You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! I know. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Huh. Uh, 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 no! Woof! Woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Echelle has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. <gasps> to make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Miriam? Oh, hello? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. <laughs> you might not have any hands, but Nunny does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. 
That's an easy way, and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand on the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Did we just die? I... I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Oh! But you're not uh, fast enough, and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. What the heck? Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweet here, sweetheart. Look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Nanny's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks on in onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I script I skipped straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Nunny to do the honors, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Chicken. <laughs> oh. It's beautiful. And inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette, top atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two-way tender nugget. Nougat? Nougat. And pearl <laughs> I was like, Nougat? <laughs> and pearls of blueberry jelly. You'll find with this game, I cannot read. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity is in your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> as he places a soft, covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize I mean, the rage. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't even like that. <laughs> we're, we're wounded. Like, what are we going to do? Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. Huh? What? The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. And they fall off your face. Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. Huh? Huh? Oh, I, I just skipped that. It's Colonel Sanders! He's probably here to tell you that he and Etelé are in love and he have decided to get married. What? And, and he won't even ask you to cater his wedding, because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to feel your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, motivated, and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. <laughs> but I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as a... Ob <laughs> ob <laughs> obst obstetrician? Obstetrician. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Oh no. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a, m a mule handler. That was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. I didn't know what an obstetrician was. 
People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No matter of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. Hold on, I... Obstetrician. What is that? <laughs> what is an obstetrician? It's a doctor who specializes in pregnancy, childbirth, and a woman's reproductive system. Oh. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little weird. Put his legs in that. Well, good anyway. for him. <laughs> good for him. Well, he failed he did at that. Fail. Yeah, so never mind. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. What did you do? <laughs> Yay! He just does that. He just comes in and says one thing. You're doing great, Pop. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Again? Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. We have to actually keep Borko. <gasps> like in the like in the library card. Oh wow. Bo Borko? It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you. And I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems. Am I right? Aw. Thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark at night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't what? believe it. You were a human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Nanny, together. I'm sure we can defeat them. <laughs> Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Oh. Oh. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. What Seems if it's like, like the more we... Huh? Oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> what, what if it's like a dirty basement? I, I wouldn't be surprised. What if it's just a giant, like, dirty kitchen underground? Yeah. I, I'm just concerned how, like, it feels like every time we're like, let's just not be around him. It seems to be like, no, I, that was the correct choice. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, maybe, like, going after him is the wrong way to do it. I, I, maybe. Don't be so aggressive, man. 